malawimusic.com nyimbo za chimalawi Hello, good afternoon. This is a Malawi Music Podcast. After a very, very long break and we are back. And today you're with me, Flora Mirumba, and of course my co-host Amuna Miso, also known as Samson Vitamba. Sure. And in this edition, of which is our very first edition in this year, we have a guest. Code Sangala. Sangala. I don't know. <laughs> 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 you know oh, oh, so this is kind of funny. Like you guys haven't been live for a while. Though. Yeah. Yeah. But then for some I should start asking you, why do you not go live? What, what's up with that? Because like I know that like podcasts like really need continuity. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, right? Exactly. So like why did you stop? Okay, we stopped because we were doing like a documentary. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So, should I call you code CO or code Sangala? To be honest, I don't mind either. But like, I am going by code Sangala now because I feel like um, what I am doing with my music is a little bit more mature, and I think that there's a lot of growth to the music layers, and it's also easy to kind of like sell out to the world. CO becomes a little bit more youthful and uh, even though I'm young at heart I'd like to think that like I'm pretty grown. You know? So good. Yes. It's been a minute. It's been a long minute, that's true. Yeah, it's been a minute. So where have you been? I have been all over the place. Um, I've been in the US, I've been in Malawi and you know just returned from the US and so uh, okay. it's been um, a roller coaster of like up and downs, you know, um, and um, you know, nothing sad, nothing you know, <laughs> depressing, <Yeah>. you know. <laughs> Let's just put a disclaimer there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like I was like like in a rehab or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's it's been a lot of growth, uh, a lot of um, a transitioning, and um, I think going to the U.S. was big transition. Coming back here. Is a big transition, yeah. so but I'm back in Malawi now, and so um, we can probably uh, leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Cole is back, and you don't have to worry about anything. No, he is back in Biko. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Can you tell us about the club way back in Mwimba Kwa to Kundila and the Okay, yeah. sure. so that's 2001. Like um, I was, I, I was talking to her like behind the scenes, if you will. That, that was 2001 that we released that record, uh, me and my young brother Shatrick. Uh, we were very young and we were very hungry. Uh, we were listening to a lot of R&B. Um, so the music was very much influenced by rhythm and blues. We listened to a lot of boys to me and a lot of only four part harmony. Uh, I transitioned into more of the jazz I was listening, there was a time I was listening to a lot of a cappella, like a gospel a cappella, no. tech six, uh, you know, uh, groups like that. So there's a lot of vocal harmonies that I learned from that period of time when I was just really listening to a cappella. But um, me and my brother, we have three albums, as you might be aware. And then we did um, um, the Christmas album with Noel and then uh, our third album was called 26 Old with Benzie yeah. and Noel and Noel and Noel and Noel Yes, <laughs> so it, was, it was quite popular, yes. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, so you and Shadrick were, you, you were doing good, yeah. to be honest. You yeah. were really, really good. Yeah. So yeah. what really happened? Because yeah. I saw somewhere you said, Kuri, nothing really happened, you just, right. you just had to grow. Yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> This is yeah, that's what I read. I'm so. glad. Well, <laughs> I'm glad because that's exactly what happened. So I'm not going to tell you anything outside that because I think that what happened was like 
I've always been um, inspired but by traditional music here. Uh, you might be aware, well maybe not, but like uh, you might be aware that I'm a cultural coordinator for a dance ensemble that is based at the Museum of Love. It's called Chichiri Cultural Heritage now. Yes, so um, Chichiri Cultural Heritage has sort of like shaped the way that I, I would like my music to sound. And if there will be something like a future of what could sound on music, it will definitely be uh, shaped by uh, the Chichiri Cultural Troupe and like traditional music. So I listen to a lot of like music from back in the day. Um, you might not be aware of this, probably you might, you, you, you might have been young, but like uh, a lot of music before there was like um, uh, corporate, uh, not corporate, but like um, commercial radio station or the commercialization of radio stations. Uh, one of my former broadcaster, you were asking me behind the scenes, yeah. <laughs> radio station I was, I was, I ran 101 for a very, very long time. I started out as a young DJ transitioned into you know positions uh, to a degree that like I was pretty much the stage station manager. Right. So I know a bit about broadcasting. But um, that was the time when I uh, I sort of like grew to love uh, music of traditional origin origin and um, I listened to a lot of music bells recorded at Malawi Broadcasting Corporation. So the Daniel Gajambas, the Alan Namogos, the Kimbo Rio Jazz Band, the Dingo Brothers, I mean the list is endless. Yeah. You know, so that is the music that I have zoomed into now. I'm listening it so much to a point of obsession, I suppose. You know, um, and, and, and and that's that's pretty much what inspires music and um, my music at, 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 at the moment. So that time, my brother wanted to play music that was more going leaning towards rhythm and blues, and I was like leaning more sort of like what we call tradistic, you know, uh, like authentic Malawi, if you will. And so there was a little bit of like, um, I guess you would call. A, Put it mildly, you know, a, a little bit of cash in, in, in music direction, you know, and with that cash would we'll have a little bit, bit of friction. And so it was easier for me to be just be able to say, okay, look, if we can be able to come back and do Gabintia, let's come back to that. But let me exercise growing what I want to grow, which is like exploring, um, incorporating more traditional elements into my music. And that's all there is. So is Shadrick, enough? Shadrick, I believe he's like uh, doing farming now. So uh, yeah, um, he's doing pretty well. So he no longer does music. He's doing music probably in a different kind of direction, you know. What I mean? But you will have to ask him that. I can't speak, I can't speak <laughs> yeah. on more his behalf. <laughs> yeah, <that makes sense. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to speculate. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Shadra, if you're like um, hearing uh, these guys I watching, think they, yeah, they probably want you yeah, to grill you about, what, if you're watching, you're, about you're what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, there you go. So, you were quiet, music wise, but we heard of music against malaria. Right. I have never quite really been quiet. Uh, I released my first solo album in 2013, and three years later I, was, uh, I released a solo album called Mizu, which was recorded on, uh, uh, which was released on a record label that's based in the UK called Naxos. So um, I think the concentration is more the digital music. Uh, distribution and you know, getting the music across to the world, you know, and so it sounds like I was quiet because like I was part of concentrating on selling CDs because I don't know, very few people listen to CDs these days, you know, music is all online, you know, so uh, they're online. They like to, they, they like to Spotify. Yeah, Amazon. right, so like, I mean, if you Google Code Sangha album Mizu, um, you probably find it on, on Spotify, you find it on Deezer, you find it on Amazon and iTunes and all of them global platforms that people have the music you know and they're all there you know the music is all there so that's sort of like the concentration and then you mentioned music because that's a huge one um, that's an organization that was established in 2017 I founded it and um, pretty much uh, because I went through a near-death uh, situation with malaria. I nearly died, I had full-class malaria, and uh, of all the social issues in Malawi, 
malaria is one disease that's sidelined and yet it kills more people. You know, and uh, for me, it, it was testament. It, it was testimony because I'm like it's somebody. Yeah, I'm a survivor. That's true, but I'm also somebody that is um, living in town. You know, and uh, it's one of the challenges that we find as an organization is people um, delay to go for a test. You know, and uh, there are a lot of other problems that are happening. People feel like, oh, okay, you can be the to we do not encourage that. What comes first is to get tested. Otherwise. No. So, I, so, I, so, I, so, I, the music against malaria, what we're doing is we working with the government. We have got a partnership with National Malaria Control Program, which is the mother body, and they have a strategic plan on how to be able to go about combating malaria here in Malawi. Right now, there's a big issue about um, they call it IRS, which is insect insecticides, residual spraying. That's going around. But um, in all general terms, the biggest way to prevent malaria is to sleep, to sleep under a mosquito and treat it. Ah, you know, my bunny guy, you know. Ah, no, no, no. So, 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 it's baseless. No, nobody, no, no scientific evidence over that. So, do you have offices? We are not. A, we don't have offices because we haven't found the need to, to, to do offices. What we do is we do activities. So we have activities like in 20, 2019, We had a, the, our our very first big festival. We called the Music Against Malaria Culture Festival. It was um, conducted. It was held at a Blanta Sports Complex. Yeah, and we raised within the, that year. We had activities that had it were in the U.S. Um, um, I've got a partner named Evan Marie Queen, who's also a musician from the U.K. We had fundraisers in the U.K. Um, and all that collected uh, amounted to about twelve million, which we uh, uh, part of the proceeds went to refurbication of uh, refurbishing of uh, Chigwara District Hospital. Moonlight girls will come around and they're like so happy and they're so joy you and they're celebrating. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, for your your youngsters who don't recognize or relate to that, that's what used to happen. Nobody never used to like about filters or what filters knew on social media. People just used to be happy and just play games and just leave life normal without the pressure of who is liking who or who's got the most likes. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? So that's in a nutshell what a uh, big issue is about. It's a celebration of simple life which is not there anymore. It's non existent. You know, you don't have people that like I just want to take a picture of their face without filters. I would people check it as a poop who's also the job. Just like you said, you're getting it. They would do it. They would do it. They would do it. They would do it. Alright, good. Uh, when there's a big issue now, we organize it to be here. I, I hope it's so. Because anyone can like, like the likes of us, you might be able to do it. Right. The only one? Yeah, the only one. I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, so, you should have a little bit of a jammy jammy. A lot is coming. Because you only have one album, right? As I have two, I have two albums. So the first album was under CEO, mm -hmm. and then uh, Mizu, the first was Ayas. So the next album is coming through 
si the city has been there for a long time and so on and as you of course my uncle has said and as you of my uncle come we are going to go to go and go to the hospital so this is going to be material from uh new album that's probably going to be released next year yes so bigger show is just like a bigger show is just like a preamble of uh, more records that I intend to record as fast as I can. Like I said, it was uh, uh, co-produced by OBK and uh, I produced the song and we did that like about a week ago. Uh, so um, we were recording more. Yeah. All right, okay, we're about to end the interview. Okay. Yeah. I got a lot more to say. <laughs> yeah, you guys do say it. You can say A lot more to do. Okay, okay. No, okay. No, 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 I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. 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 you shouldn't go on the mouth. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's very good to talk about it. Okay, so Big Issue is out there, you know, uh, download it, stream it, share it, you know, uh, dance to it, um, wherever you are, don't be afraid to share it with everybody. Um, I am very excited about the song and I'm hoping that like you guys will be happy too. And so we got a lot more music coming through and uh, it's always an honor and a pleasure to come here and talk to you guys and, you know, get the music across. So, thank you for having me. Can I thank you? <laughs> So, guys, this is how that you learn me called Sangala. Hey, what was the new reggae new one? Big issue. Big issue. Muy beza for my music. For my music, you need to go stream it, download it, dance to it. Called Aguaya Sunda Bamiyagi next year. This was Flora Lilumba and of course my co-host. Amuna Miso. Peace. Pega a chuva, 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 p